I think it's fair to say that the flat earther Phuket word loves a demonstration. He has done countless demonstrations in his time on YouTube, all in an attempt to try and debunk the heliocentric model. Well, you may be pleased to hear that he is at it again, this time using a fan to try and prove we don't live on a globe. And in the process, sets himself up for one of the biggest flat earth fails in history. You cannot miss this one. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick word and thank you to today's sponsors. You all know I love a good play of Raid and they have got one of their biggest events yet coming up soon, the Asgard Divide. Let's have a look. Please, let's not resort to violence. Nice. Very well. So violence it is. Oh, this looks good. This looks really good. Ooh. You're probably wondering how to get these new exclusive legendary Norse mythical characters. Loki, Thor, Freya and Odin. Into your champion collection. Well, it's simple. I'll tell you how. Now, Asgard Divide runs from August the 21st to November the 22nd, where players can collect those champions based off of Norse mythology. Now, they act as Raid's unique take on these familiar figures. Now, everyone can get the legendary champion Loki the Deceiver for free, simply logging into Raid for seven days between now and October the 23rd. And players can log in for an additional seven days after that to get even more rewards. Now, players can get the other three Norse mythology champions via in-game activities. So check in-game to see how you can get those amazing champions. So don't miss out. Download Raid now using the link in the description and start working towards getting your free Loki the Deceiver champion and take on the challenges of the Asgard Divide today. If you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description or scan this QR code to get insane bonuses only available with my link. On sign up, you'll immediately get a huge starter pack with an epic champion Togar from the Orc faction. And then you'll get another starter pack after reaching level 15. That includes an epic Knight Errant from Banner Lord's faction as well. Come find me under the name Simon Dan and join my clan. Right, back to today's video and Phuket word. He seems to think that a fan with bits of paper stuck on it can debunk centuries of science. Let's find out why, shall we? Away we go. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. This fan will demonstrate for us how we can see the stars appearing to rotate in different directions depending on where we are on a level Earth. Well, trust me, there is no way you can make that work on a flat Earth. Now, if ever you ask a globe Earth believer to defend their belief with a measure of curvature on the surface of the Earth, they cannot provide you with one. Instead, they will point to the stars and they will say that uh, because we see the stars rotating in one direction when we are north of the equator and in, an, in a different direction or the opposite direction when we are south of the equator and facing the opposite direction, that is proof that we live on a globe. They say it's only possible if we're living on a globe. This is true, but I will add, when we're asked for proof of curvature, we usually do supply proof of curvature. We don't start suddenly talking about stars. But we can see here that if we rotate uh, these fan blades in a clockwise direction, that actually we can demonstrate how we can look at a portion of the sky and depending on our, where we are looking on the Earth, we will see that uh, it appears to rotate in a different direction to the direction it's actually going. So the clay, well, what we see in reality is that uh, north of the equator uh, you will see Polaris and you will see the stars appear to rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. But if you are south of the equator and you are then you've turned around and you're looking south, you will then see the stars are going in a clockwise direction, um, maybe centred around the Southern Cross. And that is the key bit. 
On both the globe and the flat Earth, it is perfectly okay to have the stars rotating anti-clockwise around Polaris as a central point. However, because of the nature of the flat Earth map, you cannot have a fixed point of rotation in the south, because one part of the south is on a complete opposite side of the disk to another part of the south. Now this means that you may be able to see clockwise rotation around the south celestial pole at one point in the south on a flat Earth, but you cannot uniformly see this from several points at once, which of course you can do on the globe. Uh, but And of course another um, assumption with the heliocentric globe Earth model is that the further you get towards the equator, the, the lower Polaris gets in our field of view until you cannot see it. If you go beyond the equator, you cannot see Polaris. Yeah, there's a bloody big planet in the way beneath your feet. And this is said to be only possible because we are, the view of the sky is being blocked by the curvature of the Earth. But again, what happens is that we only ever look at a portion of the sky and uh, we can just abandon all these heliocentric assumptions and just see the stars as they appear to be, which is very, very close to the Earth. We could be talking a few hundred miles, a few thousand miles. We could be talking. They don't even know the distance to the stars, but they're definitely not light years away. Classic flurfs. But uh, in that case, we, the sun and the moon as well, they will just uh, disappear from our view because we cannot see the entire sky. And we can't see the entire sky because the planet is in the way, as I said. On a flat Earth, you should be able to see most of the sky, if not all of it, but we can't. So if you just assume that this is the entire sky uh, in our camera's view here, um, above the level Earth, okay, we'll see that um, when we just look at a portion of it, then we will see the, the stars behaving in a certain way, depending on where we're looking. So, in reality, we can only really ever see a portion, almost half of the sky, that, uh, at any one time, depending on where we are. So here I've got uh, some uh, arrows on this uh, blade, and uh, we'll see that they're pointing this direction. So. If I turn this clockwise, basically the arrows have come in from the left, okay, and they're going off to the right, all right? And I'll just keep on turning this clockwise, and they will come around again from the left to the right. So it's pointing in the direction that they are going, all right? One. Seems pretty understandable so far. This is pretty good for you, Phuket Word. One more time, and it's going to be left to right, okay? So. That's how we would see the stars appearing to us in one uh, particular spot on the Earth. But then if we moved, and we're now looking at another portion of this, a different portion of the sky, we'll go down here, and we continue uh, turning it clockwise, okay? And as these arrows come in, they're now coming in from the right and going off to the left, okay? Yeah, just now it was from the left to the right, now we're seeing them come in from the right to the left. But they're still rotating clockwise. Please do not tell me this is all you have, because at the moment you're debunking your own model. So we can just uh, follow this round actually, and you'll see that as we go up here, we then get this change where now that we're looking at this upper portion of the sky, it's going from left to right. And as we follow it around, we'll see that it ends up going from right to left. Yeah, it's really simple, okay. And all this time, it still moves clockwise. This does not explain the opposite path of rotation in the Southern Hemisphere, does it? That's basically what is happening when we look at the stars from a particular place on Earth. So let's now use uh, this Big Dipper instead here. You can see that it's kind of got that saucepan shape, all right? So we might be looking at the Big Dipper come across the sky, okay, and uh, everything's fine and dandy as we go clockwise. Uh, and then as we take this down, okay, I'm just going to bring this down with it, okay, now we see that two things are happening. Yes, the Flat Earth has ruined a fan before misunderstanding star rotation. We've got uh, it coming in from the right to the left, 
but also it's now flipped. Okay, we didn't change anything apart from the direction that we're looking, but now we can see that it appears to be upside down compared to where it is when we're looking up the top of the fan blade here, okay? Yes, but I can sit in my back garden all night and see the Big Dipper do exactly that. Move in a circle around Polaris. Just anti-clockwise, not clockwise. All right, and the same goes for this one. I've got Orion here, so there's Orion's belt in the center. There's the, the archer's bow, all right? So you might see it go across the sky like that for you but then you might be somewhere else and you'll see it appear to be upside down, okay? But the fan is still going in the same direction. So pleased that you picked Orion because you have just debunked yourself right there. Orion is best visible in the night sky in the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere. This is because in the summer months, the sun is in the part of the sky where Orion is located, making it obviously difficult to see Orion at night. The Earth's orbit around the sun changes the night sky's appearance throughout the year. In summer, the sun's position in the sky means that constellations like Orion, which are near the sun's path, let's remember, are hidden from view in the night time because they're in the direction of the sun. In a flat earth model, the sun would need to follow a path above the flat earth, which would not naturally explain the seasonal visibility changes of constellations like Orion. The flat earth model does not have a straightforward mechanism to explain why constellations like Orion are near the sun in the summer months, if indeed it is a fixed pattern above that flat plane. It's beautifully explained in our model, rotation and orbit. Flat Earth only have sky rotation, so it breaks down. That is a strike, home run, top bins debunk, whatever you want to call it. You explain that in a Flat Earth model, Phuket word, and we'll talk. I'll wait. Well, that is indeed damning for Flat Earth, isn't it? What do you all think of that? Let me know in the comments below. Phuket Word has really shot himself in the foot with this one. But for now, we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thanks so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that thumbs up button too, and of course, sharing it if the feeling takes you. It'd be very much appreciated. Just enough time to once again thank Raid for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in the description or use my QR code to start playing today and start working towards your free champion, Loki the Deceiver. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then.